Thank you for joining us today, and we are excited to introduce you to our featured author, Lakeisha Nadira Muhammad. She is part of the book Voices of the 21st Century Women Who Influence, Inspire, and Make a Difference. This book really serves as an opportunity for women from around the world uh, to come together to share their voice and their truth. Uh, it's done simply by one woman simply stepping up into her own truth to be vulnerable and transparent. And I know this takes tremendous courage, which is why as more of us rise up to use our voices to educate, to guide and inspire, we must support one another by both sharing and listening. So I'd love to welcome you to the show today, Lakeisha. Um, Thank you. Welcome. So you share a very powerful um, story uh, and you challenge something that has been really status quo in our lives as we know. And um, so perhaps you could give us some insight of what inspired you or motivated you to share this story. Yes, thank you so much, Gail, for the opportunity. So yes, I do share something that challenges the status quo, as you said. And one of the things that inspired me to share this particular story is because I realized that there are many women out here who needed an advocate, who needs um, to hear a voice, who is not afraid to challenge, to challenge the status quo, something that we're typically used to. I was inspired also by the many women out here who I see and who I oftentimes hear stories of who are oftentimes convicted or feel bad about the decisions that they, are, they make as it relates to maternal health. And as a maternal health advocate, it's my duty and it's my job uh, to be the voice for those who may not have a voice. So simply my inspiration and motivation was for the women around the world who need that extra push, but also need a voice. And I'm that, I'm that voice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love your, I love the strength that comes through and uh, the, and the gentleness that you use uh, with the reader about this story. Now, because you tackle a subject that, you know, traditionally we're taught that, um, you know, birthing in the hospital is the way to go or with a medical center versus home. Um, I what do, would you expect a reader to gain from reading your story? Hmm. That's a great question. One of the things that I would expect a reader to gain when they read um, my story, The Gift of Birthing, um, I want them to gain a sense of confidence. I want them to gain um, a sense of freedom, and I want them to regain, if they've ever lost it, their voice. Um, another thing is that I want them to be able to, not necessarily, because again, my story is not meant to convince anyone about the type of birth that they're going to have. It really is more so, that was my story. So whether or not, whether you choose to have a home birth, which would be wonderful, or you choose to have a beautiful hospital birth. It doesn't matter. I just want women to understand that they hold the key to their own destiny and the destiny of their children. And that's not something that we should relinquish over to someone else because of fear and because of status quo. As women, so often we have had our rights taken away from us. We have been put in a position to have to make choices that may be uncomfortable. And unfortunately, we are put in a position where fear rules. So I don't want a woman to be afraid of her voice. I don't want her to be silenced, but I want her to feel comfortable enough to know that no matter what you choose to do, you as the mother of the universe, you as the woman who really has the responsibility, not only to yourself, but to your children, you are the one that should make that decision. And it shouldn't be forced upon you, but it should be something that is beautiful, sweet, and something that our children will love us forever because of the decision that we made to be their voice. I love it. So, you know, this intrigues me, this, uh, what, you, what you talk about. And what I would really be, and because of, I, I mean, I can hear the passion in your voice. I'm passionate about it. 
I am. Oh yeah. <laughs> you are the best advocate for this subject for Thank sure. <laughs> On a personal note, what was the gift of experiencing home birth for you? Wow, what a question. On a personal note, hmm, the gift of experiencing a home birth for me was to know that I, as a mother, as a woman, um, represented so many women around the world. Because, you know, we've been doing this since the annals of time. You know, hospital births are very new with, you know, within the last few hundred years, but it's very new. It's a new practice. And because even with this book, Gail, it is a book that's meant to inspire. And we have many beautiful women from around the world who are sharing their stories. The same as reflected in my story and the gift that it was for me is to know that I represent maternal health. Me as a woman me as the goddess of the universe, me as the woman of civilization who have bought in, who represent my ancestors, the woman who really stands today in this time, in the 21st century, who will be the voice for other women. You know, we have a new generation of women who stand proud today, and they're not afraid, some of them, but some of them may be, but that's okay. So for me, Gail, I would say my gift is knowing that I can be a vessel, that I can be a voice for those who may need to speak just a little louder so that we can tell the story of our ancestors before us, that we stand united today to make a choice, our own choice. Whew. Um, you were giving me the shivers as you spoke. Was, wow. uh, your strength. Okay, so you have been gifted. You are the absolute right vessel, as you call yourself, to share <laughs> this message. So tell me, with this gifted message of yours, what? how is it showing up in your life today? Are you uh, working with people? What are you doing with it? Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, one of the things that I do, I am a maternal health advocate. Um, as well as a holistic health practitioner. But I have a name that I've given myself and I call myself the indigenous baby catcher. That's something that I created because the thing about me is that I help other women who choose whether they choose to have a hospital birth or whether they choose to have a home birth, it doesn't matter. But I help other women on their journey. And I won't just say other women, I help families because this is a family affair. I help families, but specifically the woman on her journey to birthing. It's a beautiful experience and it should not, we shouldn't go in it afraid. We should go in it knowing that, wow, can you imagine that must be something extremely powerful that we as women have been gifted with the beautiful task of bringing forth new life so sometimes we're afraid, but I don't want us to be. So that's what I do. If even if it's something as simple as having a birthing plan, you know, when we go to the hospital, we don't even think about it. We go, we just show up. We go to our pediatrician. I mean, we go to our um, person who's helping us along the way, whether it's a midwife or whether it's a doctor, and then they tell us a date. And when we get ready to go into labor, we show up. But what if you had a birthing plan? What if you intentionally decided, wow, this is what I would like to see? Because it's all about you. You're that queen. You're that goddess who has the power to create your birth the way you want it. We don't have to be afraid of the stories that we've seen. We don't have to be forced to think that it's only one way. So again, it's not meant for me or it's not my desire to convince you of how you should birth is just really my hope that we make the decision for ourselves. And it's a powerful decision, Gail. It's a really powerful decision. Uh, you are very powerful. I, I tell you, and I wanna thank you for sharing your story um, as a very strong voice um, of women in the 21st century 
I mean, you leave a legacy of uh, taking, by using your strength to challenge status quo, to stir things up, to be that conversation starter, just really remarkable. And I really want to thank you for sharing your story once again in this book. And thank you for sharing uh, with us today that opportunity to get to know you just a little bit more. Thank you so much, Gail. I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this wonderful, phenomenal, awesome experience with other women and sharing their stories as well. So I thank you. I'm honored. Okay. Well, okay. There's a woman out there right now listening to this conversation. Mm -hmm. And she may be just in the early stages of her pregnancy. And all she knows, you know, she's been reading, she's been looking into different options. What are your words of wisdom for her as she embarks on the gift of giving life? Wow. My words of wisdom to that women, woman who's out there, who's just wondering, what should I do? My words of wisdom to you is that stand in your glory and stand in your truth. You are a beautiful soul who has been put here to bring forth life. Make a decision that you feel good about. Make a decision not out of force, but make a decision out of the freedom that God has gifted you. You are a co-creator in this process. So that is my words, or those are my words of wisdom to that wonderful woman who's out there who just needs to hear that. You are just amazing. <laughs> so beautiful. I'm a person of you, Gail. Thank you because amazing recognizes amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, and thank you for those words. They're, they were very moving. And to our amazing listeners right now, I'd love to thank you for joining us today and definitely invite you back again next week to hear from another woman sharing her voice. And remember, you've been gifted with a very powerful message yourself because to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. So thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Mama.